shorter talk, so we start with the good news. Uh, as my um, uh, colleague said, Dr. Safa, that you know, atrial fibrillation is the most common arrhythmia, and you know, systemic embolism is a major problem of that. And left atrial appendage is the most common site of thrombus formation, so we understand the problem. Uh, anticoagulation, for sure, it's proven to reduce the risk of thromboembolism. However, sometimes it may be contraindicated. Uh, and then LA appendage exclusion developed, uh, whether surgical or percutaneous. And we're going to talk mainly about Watchman device today because it's an FDA approved and it was mostly uh, st uh, commonly used and studied. So it's a self-expanding nitinol uh, cage. It was studied in the Protect Atrial Fibrillation 2009, then Prevail 2014, and then, you know, after extended follow-up uh, in 2017, uh, it was proved to be non-inferior to warfarin in preventing stroke, however, without the complication of uh, bleeding and all that stuff. Then it was in uh, 2015 uh, approved by the FDA for a non valvular atrial fibrillation in those patients who need anticoagulation and have a reason not to receive anticoagulation. Uh, okay, so the protocol also, as Dr. Safa said, involves giving, you know, a, sm a short period of time some uh, uh, warfarin until endothelialization occur. It's 45 days post implantation. Then you go to dual uh, antiplatelet, usually aspirin and clobidogrel for six months, and then aspirin indefinitely. So we're going to speak about left atrial appendage anatomy. There is an orifice, a neck and body and apex. This orifice is the anatomical orifice. It's different than the orifice we measure for a particular device. Uh, okay, so uh, also the anatomy has just been mentioned. It, it can be a windsock, cactus, a cauliflower, and chicken wing, and the commonest one is chicken wing, but because imagine a uh, chicken wing has a wide neck but a shallow depth. This will make it a little bit difficult for a uh, watchman device. So it, it will push the watchman device out, uh, outside. Okay, so pre-closure, remember, I'm talking about watchman. These measurements are for the watchman device. So you should uh, image the appendage uh, in all angles, starting 0, 45, 90, and 135. Then you measure, you know, the maximal diameter of the landing zone. Now, this is different orifice. It's not the anatomical orifice. This is for watchman. So it's 2 centimeter below the pulmonary vein limbus, comedian ridge, ligament of Marshall, whatever you like to call it, but it's uh, around two centimeters from here to here. And then the other side here, you see the circumflex artery. And this is, you know, where you measure the landing zone. And which landing zone we take? We take the largest so in all angles. Okay. <coughs> then you size your device accordingly. Uh, the device should be eight to 20% larger than the landing zone than the largest landing zone you have. Sometimes, you know, there are contraindication or measurements that preclude uh, LA appendage not suitable for watchman device. Either uh, too large orifice or too small. Uh, too large is more than 30.4 or too small less than 16.8 millimeter because there are no such devices suitable for these measurements. Also, if the depth is smallest than uh, the largest LA orifice diameter because you know most of uh, of the of the watchman device will be outside the orifice. And if there is a secondary uh, left atrial appendage lobe orifice that is less than one centimeter from the orifice, so if there is a secondary lobe, we like it to be <coughs> deeper than one centimeter. Okay. So Dr. Hani also he did me a favor and he spoke uh, about the, the puncture. The appendage is ant anterolateral, so you have to go infraposterior and push your wire so it will go to the anterolateral and land in the appendage. So either we do it by biplane transesophageal or 3D. In biplane, <clears throat> the image on the left is at zero angle 
the image on the right is at 90 degrees. So uh, the right side, oops, let me go back. Okay, so the right is uh, anterior of the left image and left is posterior. At 90 degrees or, or uh, bicaval, right is superior and this is inferior. So we look at the tenting. Uh, the easiest way to do 3D. If you do a 3D and you know, you know where is the best place for puncture is where the red arrow is. So you, you will guide the operator here. <coughs> Sorry. Sometimes the wire will slip into the, uh, the PFO. And then you maybe uh, want the operator to withdraw it and you know, try to puncture the septum in the correct position if he wants an easy procedure. Okay, so this is the device. He's trying to position the device in the left atrial appendage. You know, this is not a good position, so he would pull it back. He would make sure that you know, it is in the orifice, landing zone. So this is a, a good position device, you can see it. Now, it's ready for release. Before release, we have to do a few tests. It is the pass criteria. We have to check for position, we have to check for the anchor, the size, and the seal. Position, by checking the protrusion. The device, the shoulder of the device, as showed here, uh, should not protrude more than 40% of the device depth. In other words, 60% of the device should be below the landing zone. The anchor, so the operator will perform a tug test. He will pull the wire and let go. So he will check if the, if the device uh, position is uh, stable and it will stay where it should stay. So keep looking at and what he's doing. You will see he's pulling the wire yeah, and letting go, see? And very well anchored device. It's not moving at all. This is uh, a little bit important about the sizing of the device. So uh, because it's a circle, if you are looking at the device from uh, above, it's a circle. So in order to, <coughs> sorry, in order to get the exact diameter uh, of a circle, you have to cut it in the middle, in the center of the circle. So in that case, you have to see the metal attachment of the watchman device to do appropriate measurement, like the green line. But if you cut it, you know, a little bit off, like here in the red line, you will get different measurement, a smaller measurement than what you should get. So again, we measure in all angles after we see the, the metal attachment, like here. So this is the device diameter and we measure it again in all angle, and we have to make sure that the compressed diameter or the device diameter, diameter that we measure is eight to 20% lower than, than the device uncompressed diameter that is provided by, on, on the label of the device. And lastly is the seal. You look for any leakage. So again, you do it in all angles, and you do it in z at 0, 45, 90, and 135. Uh, leakage like this, you have to measure the vena contracta or the narrowest. Uh, <coughs> <coughs> Don't know what's happening. Fi haja bizarre. Okay. So it should be less than 5 millimeters. So anything less than 5 millimeter is accepted. So now what do we do for a follow-up? So anticoagulation will continue until another transesophageal echo is done uh, after 45 days. So if we, we have, again, I show you this all angles to tell you that we have to check at all angles. So uh, we're checking 0, 45, 90, and 135, looking for everything, position and, and mainly uh, for leakage. And if the, the paravalvular leak is less than five millimeter, it is acceptable, and we can that time stop the anticoagulation and just switch to dual antiplatelet. And thank you very much. <laughs>